Welcome. Today we're going to demonstrate how to bee proof your large 32 ounce feeders very easily, quickly, and for very little cost. So stay with us and let's get her going. What I want to show you today is in this video is another good technique to bee proof your hummingbird feeders. And this idea was sent to me by another by a viewer, uh, and boy, it really works well for this large red feeder right here. It works perfectly. And uh, um, so stay tuned, and we will show you that right now. It's real easy, it's very inexpensive, and it works really well. What we found when we bee-proofed our feeders last year was this. The only ones that we could attach the bee guards to these things, I hope you can see that, okay? The nectar guard, bee guards, we bought those online. And we attached them to only the smaller red feeder here, this one, because it'll accept the bee guards. The bee guards are these little Inside this package, inside this package comes a dozen of these little plastic cleary sort of things that attach to the underside of the ports and it makes it so the, the hummingbirds can still poke their beaks down through that but the bees supposedly can't. But we found that that was only somewhat effective. The bees still this year when they, when they finally came in early July, they were still getting on these feeders more than we liked. And um, a couple of things we did to mitigate that was we don't fill the feeders as all the way to the top of the uh, rim there. If we keep it down maybe as much as a quarter inch, the hummers can still reach the nectar, but the bees can't. Also be very careful not to have any nectar running down the sides of the clear bottom there because the, um, if there's any nectar, the bees will, will come to that and try to you know, lap up that nectar that's running. Even if, it's, even if you can't see it, even if it's dried, they will try to get to that. So it's important to, to carefully fill the feeders and clean them every time, but don't, um, don't let, it, and don't let the, any, ne any nectar run down the side. These larger red feeders here like the, are nice because they hold 32 ounces of nectar. You don't have to fill them as often or refill them as often, and the hummingbirds do like them. However, they are not suitable to put these bee guards on. There's no place to slide them on. So I'll show you that again. These little bee guards, can you see that? So I get that to focus better. The little bee guards will not mount on there. Here again is the package of bee guards. And uh, yeah, they work pretty good, but not perfectly. But we found a way to mitigate that. This feeder here, this big red 32 ounce feeder, is now completely covered with bees all day long. And the hummingbirds won't come to it. That's been a real problem because we put this feeder up for hummingbirds and generally the hummingbirds love this style of feeder. They come and they drain it uh, pretty quickly, but with this bee problem, um, they won't come. And if they do come and the bees are there, they, they fly away to some other feeders. Now we have bee proofed a couple other feeders. However, this feeder appears uh, not to be uh, suitable to put the bee guards on. The um, other product we use is this, is this mint spray. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt the bees. If we spray the feeder when the bees are nearby or on it, they, they drive them off, it doesn't hurt them, but it only has a limited uh, time that it works, hour or two, and you gotta keep respraying all day long. So we're hoping to find a better uh, solution than that. And um, here in, uh, I live in the metropolitan San Diego area in Chula Vista, California. In the last few years, we've had two outbreaks of bees every summer, one, one in July, and a, that lasts a couple of weeks, and then a second outbreak of bees that happens sometime in September, October. Again, lasts a week or two. And uh, there are times before we you know, try to prevent the bees that our, our feeders were covered with bees and the hummingbirds won't come. Um, and so that, that's why we, we look so hard to find these solutions. That window feeder there that sticks on the window with a suction cup 
and you can see we have a customer there right now, that is not prone to get bees. The bees don't are not attracted to that. It almost ha it has little built-in bee guards right out of the box, and that seems to be doing the job all by itself. But um, and suddenly, you know, their their, their preferences change all the time. That feeder was being ignored for several weeks, and then suddenly they're draining it every couple of days. It's really an amazing process. See, and here's another one there. But uh, that's become real popular. And our, our, our dining room table is just inside that window, so we have the enjoyment of watching Hummers when we're on our computers and having breakfast and, and meals and stuff. It's a great, great situation for us. So to bee proof this larger 32 ounce feeder, and this is a great feeder for us in the summertime when we have a lot of hummingbird traffic because it holds 32 ounces and uh, it'll last for a few days. But when they swarm in here like they do, they'll drain this every couple of days or every three or four days. So it's, uh, it's important though to bee guard it because um, when they, they, the bees land on every port and they cover the, the feeder and the hummingbirds won't come. And I hope you can see this. It'll be shown better in the video as we go along. But to help that, to, to, to repel the bees, we buy this tubing at a local home center. Uh, it's cover that more in the um, in the video here, and then we use that tubing, if you can see, to raise the height of the ports enough to where the hummingbirds can get into it, but the bees can't, and that works very well. It's very easy to do, and it costs almost nothing. And I'll show you exactly how to do it here. So it worked out that. A viewer of our bee proofing video sent us a great suggestion on how to bird, how to bee proof this feeder. And it was remarkably easy. His name is Bill Manders. He's from Georgia and he viewed our video and he sent us a suggestion on how to make it, how, how to, how to even make a better way to bee proof the feeders. And he used lengths of drinking straw. However, we found a different product that works just as well at a local home center we purchased some of this uh this is actually designed to be fuel line for uh like i guess two cycle power a lawn and a garden to probably like chainsaws and weed trimmers but it says right on the label that it's non-toxic i don't know if that's going to show with the glare but it says right on the label that it's non-toxic so it's got to be safe for our hummers and the size that we purchased is the one quarter inch outside diameter and one eighth inch inside diameter. And we cut little lengths of nine thirty seconds of an inch of this. I actually wrote that on the back side of the tag so I could remember next time I do it. We cut little nine thirty seconds inch pieces of that and we hot glue those in to the to the base of this feeder. Of course the hot glue solidifies quickly and then we can refill the feeder put it right up and it works real well. We'll show you how we do that. This is Bill Manders. His idea is to use drinking straws, but we found that the tubes we showed you work better. To be proof, this feeder is pretty easy actually. We're gonna take it apart and we're going to install those tubes that we showed you and we'll show you how, but first we have to drill some holes in the base of this feeder. Easy enough to do. Take the feeder apart by unscrewing the, the base from the storage bottle, like so. Put the bottle on the table, and then we simply, this is how you would fill it the same way and clean it the same way, pop it apart, take the little feeding port, the feeding port portion from the top from, of the base, and then the base, and we're going to drill some holes we're going to enlarge the holes where the ports are now. You see those ports, there's 10 ports. We're going to enlarge them from their present size from the factory to one quarter inch. We put in a one quarter inch drill bit in our drill. Then using this little piece of scrap, we mount the, uh, we put, lay the base, the, I'm sorry, the feeding port portion of the base on that, on that scrap and drill the holes. It's pretty easy. Hold it tight and go. So 
So there you have it. All 10 ports have been drilled out. We're gonna clean those holes up here in a moment. We can easily deburr the holes because some of the little plastic burrs, kind of, just by taking a pocket knife like so, then a few times and rub it across the top and that gets rid of the burrs real easy. There you go. There's one there, that one's clean. That one's clean. That one's clean. We won't, we won't bore you doing all 10, but that's kind of how we do it. In our garden, in this portion of it, there are, I think, nine different hummingbird feeders. One here, a little red one like this, which we mount on those little plant supports in this, in this potted, uh, that's actually milkweed, Asclepius, for our monarch larva. There's also, we'll show you close-ups in a moment, there's also five little button feeders in this coffee mug. And then over here, we have a small hanging red feeder, the large 32 ounce that's been bee proofed. And on the window over there, we have a suction cup stick on the window feeder. That one uh, bees have not uh, been a problem for. So we've never done anything to bee proof that one. This is a close up of our smaller red feeders. The Hummers do like it. They have been bee proofed, but as I mentioned earlier, or as I mentioned before, we have to be very careful how we fill this so there's no nectar running down the sides that the bees will come to. Or, um, and we don't fill it quite to the top to prevent the bees from trying to get down the, uh, the top ports where the hummers are wanting to go. In this coffee mug are five of the little button feeders. They hold only a fraction of an ounce of the uh, hummingbird nectar. And uh, as you can see, they don't hold very much, but the, the, the hummers do come. And I, I set this up so I get some great still shots of that. And I'll, I'll attach one of those shots into this video in a moment. But uh, that's... Um, we enjoy watching that. They do come and they do, they, they, depending on their mood, they might drain these once a day or even more. Uh, sometimes they don't use them at all. And here we are sharing a morning beverage with one of our little friends. It takes a little bit of patience, a camera on a tripod that's triggered by a remote intervalometer, but that works pretty well for that. And if you're sick and are patient, they will come. I wear my flowery shirt. That seems to encourage them to come. They like the flowers. And now in this uh, uh, sequence, you see I'm holding the button feeders in my, between my fingers. And um, you see there's a little bird on the right of that picture. And in the next picture, we have a little hummer on the left. Again, it takes a little bit of patience, but if you sit quietly and stand still, they will come and they will eat right out of your hand. We're getting a lot of hummingbird traffic right now. You can see the window feeder over there has a hummingbird on it at this moment. The small red feeder just above it has a hummingbird on it at this moment. And the morning time is when they come. See, they're flying off because I'm walking over there. But here is, uh, here's the three feeders. The small red has been bee proof with those little plastic things. This one has been adapted with the tubes. And then the, uh, the window feeder uh, the bees don't seem to be drawn to, so we have no problem with that one. And there are another four feeders on two more patios in our house. So it's a, uh, we're a real hummingbird haven here. In this potted plant with the one little red feeder hanging from a plant support in there, we do have the milkweed, the Asclepius, this is Asclepius tuberosa. It, uh, we plant that to attract humming, uh, to attract monarch butterflies and they do uh, lay their eggs and the, the larvae do eat the leaves and then we earlier in uh, this year in February and March we actually had several chrysalis form and we we got a video of a, of a, of a butterfly emerging of a monarch butterfly emerging so you can you can watch that video if you search through our videos here. Bill Manders our viewer from Georgia sent us this wonderful idea that works very well to bee proof these 32 ounce uh, hummingbird feeders. And the issue with these is this. The bee guards, little plastic bee guards that we ordered online, won't work with this feeder because the underside of the port has nothing that you can slip those bee guards onto. There's nothing there to slide them onto as there is with the other feeders that we have. So they won't work with this. So you have to do something else. We bought the, it's a quarter inch outside diameter and one eighth inch inside diameter. 
we cut these into 9 32nd inch lengths, and so I remember that number. I actually wrote that 9 32nd on the back side of this tag. We also tried a smaller tube. This tube is 3 32nd inside diameter and 3 16 outside diameter. We found that the Heimers did not like this smaller tube. They wouldn't come as readily to this as they would to the wider tube, so that's what we're going to use today. Using our combination square preset to 9 30 seconds of an inch, again we had written that on the back side of this tag, I double checked the length of our little tubing lengths and make sure it's good. Now this is not rocket science, it doesn't have to be exact. A 30 second longer or shorter isn't going to affect the outcome or the final result too much. So the next step is to hot glue in our little pre-cut tube sections, here they are on the table there and they're right there see that a little pre-cup second we're going to hot glue them into our now quarter inch drilled out hummingbird ports on the uh, base of the feeder and that's really easy to do first of all i just punch it through my pre-drilled pre -drilled holes it's, it's very important to make sure that the bottom of the tube where it comes out on the underside is flush with the underside and that's easy to do. just use your finger and make sure it's flush and then you can see the tube sticks up we want the, stu the tube to stick up above we want the tube to stick up above the um, the, uh, the the uh, the the base uh, above the feeder there about three sixteenths of an inch I won't bore you by inserting all of them one by one all ten I'll do a couple and then we'll move on to the hot gluing the tubes kind of have a a twist to them already. I try to aim that twist toward the hummingbirds on the uh, toward the outside of the base there. So put it in. Check the depth of my finger on the underside. It's real easy. I'll do one more, and then we'll move on to the hot gluing stage of it. So now it's time to hot glue. Again, all ten of our little pre-cut orange tubes have now been pre-installed in the base. You can see that now raises the height of the flower where the birds will feed to the point where they can get their beaks down there, but the bees can't reach down through that to get to the nectar below. We made sure that we put all these tubes in so that the bottom of the tube is flush with the underside of this base right here. And now we take the hot glue. We tried super glue and that does work, but hot glue is better, I think, because of course it dries real quickly. Yeah, super, glue, super glue does too, but uh, the hot glue also has the ability to seal up around the holes real good. It makes a nice kind of a, seals up around the holes real good and that makes it really easy to do that. So we're going to start hot gluing right now. Bill Manders from Georgia which suggested the hot glue, and I, again, I tried hot, I tried super glue at first, but I do like the hot glue better. So, there you go. So the reconfigured feeder is all done. We here's the underside, and if you look close, you can see how the little tubes don't protrude, don't protrude below the bottom side of the plastic here, and this is the top side, and now all the ports are extended where the hummingbirds can reach down and get the nectar, but the bees can't. It's important too when you're hot gluing to make sure that you do seal up real good around each of the tubes because if you leave a gap, the bees can get their little tongues down through that and get to the nectar. You don't want that because that'll just attract them and they'll come like crazy. But uh, the way we got it here, they're all sealed up real good. I double checked that and uh, we're, ready, we're ready to reassemble this feeder. So there you have it. This feeder is now reconfigured with the little orange tubes. As you can see, it's all been reassembled and it's ready to be kind of rinsed out, washed out, and uh, refilled and hung up for our little hummers. We really want to thank Bill Manders of Georgia for this idea because it's very easy to do, hardly costs anything. I think that 10 foot length of that tubing cost about $10 at a nearby home center, and I now have a lifetime supply of that. And uh, you, could try the, you could try his drinking straw idea too, that, that works for him, but I like my idea here, so there you go. If you have any comments or any ideas, please uh, post them here and we'll be sure to get back to you just as soon as we can. Also, we ask that you like and subscribe to our channel and our videos because we do this from time to time and we'd like to get uh, your ideas, your feedback and, 
and see how many people are watching. Thank you very much. I am Dave Perling. Have a great day. Thank you. So, give that a try and let us know how it did for you. Now, it's also important to maintain your feeders properly. And of course, uh, we, we change ours out twice a week, even in the winter time, to keep it fresh. And we make our own homemade nectar using nothing more than standard granular sugar from the grocery store and water. We use the classic, not the classic, we use the, uh, the recommended ratio of one part sugar to four parts water. You see that? <laughs> one to four. One to four uh, parts water. One part sugar to four parts water. Use only, only granular sugar, nothing else. Don't use powdered sugar, don't use brown sugar, don't add any honey, and certainly don't add any food coloring to make it red. The bees don't, I mean the birds don't care about that. The feeder has enough red on it right now. You don't want to add those chemicals to the water. Um, one time we tried buying store-bought nectar. If you look at the label on store-bought nectar, there's all kinds of other junk in there that I don't think the bee is good for the birds. And in a pinch, I bought some of the clear store-bought nectar a few years ago, and because I was gone for a while, and I had to have somebody else maintain my feeders, and um, the bees wouldn't take it. I mean, the, bird, the birds wouldn't take it. I don't know if the bees came or not, but the birds didn't drink it at all, so they didn't like it. So we stick with this uh, this recipe. By the way, that recipe and other information about feeding hummingbirds is on the Audubon Society's website. I'll put a link to that in the description here, and uh, you can check that out yourself, but it's a very good way to do it. We hope that you enjoyed this video, and um, please like and subscribe, and we love your comments, especially if you do this, this, this idea, and let us know how it worked for you. Also, if, you, if you're interested, I am Dave Perling, um, and I am available to come and talk to your, your group, your garden group, your garden club, your HOA, your church, anywhere in the country uh, for a nominal fee plus expenses. And I can cover an entire wide, wide range of topics. I've been in this business for 40 plus years. And I've done a lot of things, I've seen a lot of things. So if you're, if you're interested in that, having me come and speak, I'd do like a PowerPoint sort of thing for you. Please. Uh, contact me through uh, through this uh, this video in the comments or something, okay? Thank you very much. I'm Dave Perling. Have a great day. Enjoy those hummingbirds. Thank you. In a presentation, I can cover a range of hummingbird topics, how to attract, how to feed, and how to have lots of hummingbirds. But I also do a presentation about how to create gardens and landscaping that will be the envy of your neighborhood. I promise you that. The five topics have a plan on paper and a scale. Number two, planted beds are everything. Number three, never use these three things, and I really mean that. Number four is hardscapes will make or break your garden. And number five is the finishing touches. So get a hold of me if you'd like to have a presentation like that, and we'll try to arrange it for you. Thank you.